exert. Thank you very much. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me first start by thanking Dr. Asafa Bekele and my dear sister, Grasa Machel, for their very generous and kind words. I'm very much conscious of what I am carrying on my friend's shoulders. But let me assure you that I will do my best, not only as Ethiopian, but as an African in my heart and soul, so that we can show that women can also deliver, maybe differently, but deliver. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really, really happy to see that uh, I can count on your support, and Grasa has said it very generously, the support of all of you, by the way. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, kaburat na kaburan, dear friends, and I see many of them in this room. I'm very glad to be here today with you for many reasons. I'm glad to be here first to meet and get to know our distinguished guests who have come from all beyond our African shores. I'm referring to the two CEOs that took the floor before me of two very important international organizations working on children's issues and with, with a distinguished uh, record. The CEOs of Plan International, my former colleague, and Christian Children's Fund uh, of Canada. I want to take this opportunity to salute your commitment to the world's children and the impressive work you have done in sponsoring thousands and thousands of orphaned children, poor children, and poor communities around the world. I'm also glad to share this platform with the African Union, and I'm glad to see Deputy Chaperson, of course, and my sister, the African Union Commissioner, representing the Chaperson of the African Union. The African Union's work on behalf of Africa's children, Madam Commissioner, is singularly important. It is the African Union that sets the legal standards on the obligation of the states and that holds them accountable. The African Union has done significant work to advance the cause of children. We have come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. There is yet another reason why I am delighted to be here, the joy of being in the presence of the iconic female warrior and fighter for Africa's liberation and the renowned campaigner for women's and children's rights. And I'm referring to Grasa Machel. <laughs> Grasa, you have succeeded and achieved a lot and I fully subscribed with what Dr. Ratsafa has said earlier. The rights you have fought for are now recognized and are part of the contemporary international parlance. Africa is certainly a more child-friendly and a more gender-sensitive continent than before because of the work of people like you. But you know, and I know, that we still have a long way to go. Finally, I'm happy to be here with you, the participants of this conference, the combatants for women's and children's rights here in Africa and from around the world. Many of us, perhaps I should say, most of us only talk about women's rights, children's rights, and human rights. But many of you have been engaged actively and vigorously on behalf of the millions of women and children deprived of their rights and, I must add, their dignity. 
I salute your work and I'm therefore even more pleased to be amongst you this morning. Coming to the specific subject before us, let me start by saying that I applaud the work of the African Child Policy Forum. My little research shows that it has been doing stellar work over the years. Importantly also, it has never ceased challenging our conscience and values as a society. It has never been shy about taking our governments to task as to whether they are complying with their obligation to put children first. To its credit, it has never shirked from raising sensitive issues. I'm glad there are such an African institution and an African voice, that we Africans are speaking for ourselves and to each other, and that we own our responsibility because we all have to change the narratives about this continent. I would therefore like to thank the African Child Policy Forum for getting us together today once again around serious issues such as the persisting and pressing problem of child hunger. Thanks to our hosts, I had the privilege to have a sneak preview of the ACPF's report on child hunger. This is a short and uncompromising report on the state of child hunger here in Africa. It is damning and challenging. It deals with a problem of enormous significance here in Ethiopia. We are of course trying to address the problem through a multi-pronged approach combining different policy instruments and programmatic intervention. But the problem remains huge and complex. We therefore await with interest the outcome of your deliberations for the lessons and insights it can give us for further action here in my country. There are many important issues the ACPF report raises, but I want to take a modest approach and perspective in my conversation with you. I would like to engage with you, not as a president, but as a fellow human being. Therefore, three important observations. Let's begin by the most important, the one that connects us as human beings, as a woman, as a mother. This report documents statistically the nature, extent, and magnitude of child hunger in Africa. It demonstrates that the problem is huge, that millions should go hungry and die of hunger is simply morally unacceptable. In fact, I would go further. I do not think that, in this case, statistics per se should matter, whether the real numbers are higher or lower. As a human being, I simply, I say simply and sincerely that no child should die, should go hungry, rather. And as a mother, I would say no mother should have to bury her child because of hunger, period. For the mother who sees her child die because of lack of food, the economics of resource scarcity is irrelevant, and the politics of public policy doesn't matter. They do not help a grieving mother. She has lost her child because there is no food. Worse, because no one cares. Everyone has failed her. Society has failed her. The state has failed her. Child hunger, ladies and gentlemen, is a moral challenge to us all. Moreover, as a citizen, I find that hunger is not just a moral issue, but is, it is also a developmental one. I would even say a political issue in the largest sense of the word. 
SCPF's report shows the huge personal, social, and economic costs of hunger. It has massive implications for society and for our future economic well-being. As a citizen, I or all of us should ask ourselves, are we doing enough as a society or as a community of shared citizenship to ensure that no child goes hungry? I recognize that no society or political order is perfect, but we have the duty and obligation to ensure that we are moving towards a less imperfect and uh, to a more perfect order for all citizens, adults, and children alike. Finally, let me raise one last point. What is our role as world, as world citizens? This conference is about life and death in Africa. But when all is said and done, it's about human beings. It's about all of us. For the benefit of, of our international partners, let me quote the famous words of a famous 17th century poet you are well familiar with and can easily relate to. This is from John Donne's world famous poem, No Man is an Island. And these are his words. No man is an island entire to itself. Every man is a piece of the continent as part of the main. Many man's death diminishes me because I'm involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it, it tolls for thee. So whether the death or the killing happens to Africans or in Africa, it should not matter. It's about all of us, whoever we are, and wherever we come from. In Africa, we like to talk about Ubuntu, I am because you are. And so I would like to anchor our conversation to our common sense of humanity and world citizenship. Hence, my appeal to our international partners to look at the sanctity of human life as a duty of uh, <coughs> global citizens and thus deserving priority in international <coughs> cooperation. And I would like to conclude <clears throat> by sharing my hopes and aspirations as they are big. In this regard, let me again paraphrase Bernard Shaw. Some people see things as they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask why not. Yes, I say why not. I do certainly appreciate that dealing with massive social and economic issues are no easy tasks. They often are politically complex and economically daunting. But I believe in the capacity of the human spirit and the human will to reach the stars. I therefore dream of an Ethiopia, of an Africa that is free of hunger, of a peaceful and prosperous Ethiopia and Africa, a world where no mother must bury her child because of lack of food, and even worse, because no one cares. That is what I dream, and I therefore ask you all to join me in dreaming big and making this dream happen. Now, with these words, ladies and gentlemen, Kuburatana Kuburan, children and young people, it's my duty and great pleasure to declare this conference open, and I wish you a successful conference. I thank you very much for your kind attention.